Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Now, a few days ago, our White House COVID-19 response coordinator, Dr. Jha, said to get your Omicron-specific COVID booster by Halloween, and you don't want to be that person who gives it to your grandma. That is some very daring warning. Is his words justified? Now, let's find that out with a few recent study and hear what vaccine expert Dr. Paul Offit has to say in one of his recent interview on YouTube. Let's look at the timing of the bivalent booster vaccine. CDC stated that adults who completed their primary vaccine series are eligible for the updated booster if it has been at least two months since their previous vaccine. They advised those who recently had an infection to wait three months before getting boosted. Is such a short interval optimal if the goal is to have a robust fall or winter lawn protection? Let's look at a few immunological studies. An earlier study showed that a longer period between doses could generate a higher antibody response, amplified T-cells and enriched memory B-cells. More recent studies during the Omicron variant dominating period continue to show the benefit of waiting for a longer period between doses to increase both neutralizing antibodies and memory B-cells. A study published in the late August 2022 by a research group from Singapore analyzed the vaccine effectiveness outcomes of over 2 million of its residents aged 30 years or more. They reported that the estimated booster effectiveness against Omicron infection waned from negative 2.8% to 14.6% after 5 months. However, against severe COVID-19, the estimated booster effectiveness was 87.4%. 15 to 60 days after boosting, and 87.2%, 5 to 6 months after boosting, so not a huge drop, up to 6 months. A different study by a group from the University of Pennsylvania showed that in relatively younger people, both with and without previous infection, neutralizing antibody titers stabilized after six months after the primary vaccination and memory B cells stable for more than nine months after vaccination with more than 50% cross-binding activity against Omicron. T-cell immunity or immunity against severe illness from COVID vaccine is still holding up and it is evident by the lack of high hospitalization level even with BA5 becoming dominant this summer. Someone may say, I just want a high level of antibodies, so I would just get the booster as soon as possible. What's wrong with that? The same study from UPenn also pointed out that the greatest increase in antibody response from a booster is when the pre-boost antibody level is low, and when a person still has a high level of circulating antibodies from a recent booster or infection, a premature booster may be detrimental. A preprint study done by the National Institution of Health, or NIH, showed that giving a booster two months after a recent infection does away with effective B-cell responses. CDC's three-month post-infection vaccination recommendation makes some sense, but it depends on people's awareness on COVID-19 infection. So do we know if we have been infected or not? A recent study in JAMA showed that 56% of people infected with the Omicron variant were unaware of the infection. A recent study from Portugal showed that a previous BA.1.2 infection provides upwards of 75.3% protection against reinfection with BA.5. All of these data means the population already has high immunity against severe disease, and if the full booster is to prolong infection protection, then the CDC's message to tell people to wait at least two months after the previous vaccine is not supported by data, but it's also very confusing for people who are considering the new bivalent booster for the most optimal personal protection. 
In contrast, the Canadian National Advisory Committee on Immunization recommended that the updated bivalent vaccine be offered six months after previous vaccination or infection. One of the persuasive points to get more boosters is to reduce long COVID incidence. An Italian study published in JAMA showed that the prevalence of long COVID was 41.8 percent in unvaccinated patients, 30 percent with one dose, 17.4 percent with two doses, and 16 percent with three doses. Although we see a progressive decrease in long COVID incidence with each dose, the additional benefit for long COVID from the third dose was only 1.4 percent. Better if this pattern holds, then any additional doses may have an even smaller benefit in preventing long COVID. Now, the study also pointed out that the risk factors for long COVID, such as old age, higher body mass index, allergies, and obstructive lung disease. Let's look at transmission of the disease. Now, Dr. Jaw's message implies that. Getting the new booster by Halloween will reduce the risk of transmitting COVID to older adults at home. Now, is that a fantasy or is it reasonable? Dr. Paul Offit was asked a similar question during his recent interview on YouTube, and let's look at what he said. Again, the, the you can't set yourself up at a goal of preventing transmission or transmitting mild preventing mild disease for a short incubation period disease. It's just not. Reasonable.、Um, Clearly, vaccine experts like Dr. Alford does not believe it is reasonable to have a goal to prevent transmission or mild disease, at least with the current vaccine. The main reason is that COVID has such a short period of incubation time, and unless the neutralizing antibody level is consistently topped off, it is not possible to prevent all mild diseases and transmission. A recent systemic review and meta-analysis reviewed 141 articles and concluded that the average incubation period of COVID-19 caused by the Alpha, Beta, Delta, and Omicron variant were 5, 4.5, 4.41, and 3.42 days, respectively. Notice Omicron incubation time is much less than previous variants. That puts the Omicron incubation period on a spectrum of Flu and the common cold, and I know someone can argue that there are studies showing reduced transmission in households. A study done in the Alpha and Delta variant era showed that reduced household transmission in Israel. But now we have Omicron, so an updated systematic review and meta-analysis suggested. Household secondary attack rates are as high as 42.7 percent for Omicron BA1, and I personally think there are several significant knowledge gaps in the current bivalent vaccine. Number one, does bivalent vaccine increase spike-specific T cell immunity? Now, unfortunately, no vaccine manufacturers provided that information. And second, why are other antigens or immunogens such as the nucleocapsid, membrane proteins, or other conserved regions of the virus not considered in a booster vaccine to broaden cellular immunity? If you were my student and had taken my immunology course, you would have completed an assignment brainstorming a new antigen for a new booster vaccine. I'm sadly surprised that, that the two big mRNA vaccine manufacturers are still not moving into that direction. And third, will the updated booster vaccine improve clinical efficacy? Now, the manufacturers presented human clinical data showing the BA1 bivalent vaccine booster had less than twofold higher. BA1 neutralizing antibodies than the original booster, but does that translate to clinical efficacy? In fact, we have seen similar situation or story before. The Moderna mRNA vaccine generated twice as many antibodies as the Pfizer mRNA vaccine, 
but initial clinical trial data showed very similar efficacy in preventing COVID, which is 95% versus 94%. Now, this indicates that higher antibody levels may not have meaningful clinical differences. To wrap up, I understand the officials have a goal to promote the new bivalent vaccine, but to scare people about spreading COVID to grandma. And not being transparent to the public that currently there is no data showing if or how the new booster vaccine can prevent household transmission is just not going to convey that message well to all of us. Also, no one should expect this new booster alone can prevent all transmissions to elderly and immunocompromised people. The public deserve to know the whole picture and not just the fantasy. And this is one of the reasons I'm doing this work every week. Perhaps some of the appointed health officials could use a lesson or two on science communication. That is all for this week. Again, thank you very much for watching, and I hope I communicated better than some of the doctors on the news. If you think that is the case, please like, comment, and share this video. And I hope to see you again in my next video. And meanwhile, please take care. Bye.